Good morning, y'all. Darla's up and running. My Luminaire XP3. How are y'all doing? Good morning. It's Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our situation room, and my lighting leaves a little bit to be desired, but is what it is, y'all. Here we go. Oh. Hard time getting moving this morning. I woke up about 3.30, and um, nature call, you know, TMI, I know, whatever. <laughs> We're all friends here. <laughs> Could not go back to sleep, started reading. And uh, I just read and read. I have one of those um, Kindles that are the paper white, so you can see them at night. And, oh, hit record. Thank you. At a girl, Margie. Hold on. Let me do that. There. See, I'm sleeping this morning. I'm not on board with that. So good catch, my friend. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, I am uh, shooting the video through a Sony Handycam and it'll come on. But if I don't hit record after four minutes, it cuts completely off or a minute and a half or however long. <laughs> and there's been many a time here where we're chatting along and the camera goes click and we go to black. <laughs> it's a Monday. That's, you know, that's all right. But we're here as a team. Right. So. Right. Rhonda's saying it's 38 in Balverde. Burr. Yeah. 44 in San Antonio. I don't know what the temperature. I'm just a little bit south of San Antonio. Not much. So they said it was a. Uh... Oh, you got a new embroidery machine, Sharon. Look at you. Yay. Brother NV 880E embroidery machine with your scan and cut. No stopping you. That's it, sister. <laughs> We're going to play with that a little bit today. So I just know that uh, you were telling your husband, I really want to do this. I want to do this. <laughs> and when they say, but it costs so much, you say, boat, <laughs> golf clubs, classic car, you know, you know the drill girls. So, okay. Okay. I'm trying to pick up where we left off on Friday. So I was going to stitch the Scotty dog. And if you're new here, hi, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We do this every weekday morning just to start the day and get moving. So this is what I'm going to be showing at the Houston International Quilt Festival. But you guys, this is a little bit more detailed what you and I are doing because uh I've only got 20 minutes on stage there to get in, get it done and get out. So what I'm doing is I'm going to stitch. This is a simple shape from Lori Holt. This is from her B vintage line. Y'all I'm not, I'm not seeing real well this morning because I was reading. That's where I was going with reading on my Kindle. My eyes are blurry because I strained them. So it's hard for me to see. Oh, Cynthia, welcome back. She was vacationing in Yosemite. How nice. That's awesome. So what we were doing last week is I was showing y'all how you can take Lori Holt's simple shapes. Now, whether you've got plastic or you've got a paper applique pattern or something like that, I wanted to see if I had a paper one here. I don't remember. I don't think so. Uh, the fabric has heat and bond light on the back of it. And you need to make sure it's nice and glassy like that. It needs a good adhesion. So y'all, I had a lot of questions about, did I have to add a quarter inch to this? You do not. You don't add any seam allowance to this at all. Otherwise it'll be too big for the block. Okay. So her block finished is 10 and a half, right? So you, 10 finished. 10 and a half unfinished. So I've got an 11 and a half inch block here of background fabric. And then I've got to do the other pieces to the bandana. So I cut out the dog and I cut out the bandana, right? 
So we're going to go through. There's two more pieces to the bandana y'all caught. And it, little ties that stick up here on his neck. So we're going to cut those out if I can find the shape piece. So what we're doing here is we're going to take the simple shape. We're going to put it on a scanning mat, run it through the scan and cut, get the digital file. Oh, Y'all, I'm such a nerd. I figured out what FCM stands for. Oh, my word. <laughs> the brother dealers will have you know it's fabric cutting machine, which is silly because it was originally designed to cut vinyl and paper. That's not true. Um, fuzzy, F-U-Z-Z-Y, and then it's C-means, I believe. And it is an algorithm for connecting points in graphics. Fuzzy C means. You can look it up. I looked it up yesterday. I sent it to the young John Douthat, John F., they call him. And I said, look, I found out what it means. <laughs> and it was uh, used in originally in Minecraft. So, so that you would uh, know exactly where you were going back to when you left for the day. I don't know the number of the piece, so I'm just going to poke around in my simple shapes here, you guys. When I have my simple shapes, what I do is I sort them into baggies. See how that says 40 to 49? Okay. I don't know what piece. Let's see. This is 24, so odds are the little tie is in the bag of the 20s. But I have 20 through 29 here, and I don't see it, but it's a little bitty piece. So... Oh, how cute. Look at this. She did 11 of the little dogs and a cat. Nice. That's great. Well, this is all easy once you figure this out. Yeah, they're not, it's not in the 20s. So I'm just going to poke around here and dig around. You guys, it's early. I'm just, my brain is not functioning at all. <laughs> yeah, Mike Stone is Jeannie. She's a, she's a sweetheart. So I'm just going to poke around here till I find these. Did you guys have a good weekend? I did. I was at Quilt Market. Y'all, I fangirled all over Corey Yoder. I put a, the interview with her live on our Facebook group page. Um, Let's see. What do we got here, Mrs. P? Attempted to do this process to make gingerbread pot holder. Work good until you got to the download on Canvas. Uh, went back to scan and cut, but trying to save it to the computer said not able. Hmm. Well, that's what we call in the computer world, a PEBCAC error. PEBCAC stands for problem exists between keyboard and chair. <laughs> it's just a button thing. Don't worry about it. You'll figure it out. It's, y'all, it's just, here it is. Is this it? I think this is it. P27. It's a little bitty thing, and I need two of them. So we'll go over it today, Mrs. P, okay? And we'll see what happened. Yeah, I think that's it. What number was that? Did I have it in the wrong? Yeah, it's 27. It should have been in the bag with the 20s. Aren't I organized? But I wasn't. Okay, so it will go back into the bag with the 20s. Let me put the rest of these back in the big bag. And then I put all the, so I put all the baggies in the bag it came from. And then I have the bigger pieces in the big bag as well. Good morning, everybody. There's the love of my life. Hi, handsome. It's cold outside. <laughs> that camera. It's cold. <laughs> We're going to go out and check the neighborhood. <laughs> Made by Marty. Once had a poster Garfield with a chainsaw standing over his computer saying, compute this. <laughs> That's hilarious. Y'all, it does not matter how efficient you are with computers. They will throw a wrench at you every time. All right. So what we're going to do here. What we're going to do here does not come with your scanning cut. Highly recommend you get one. It is called a scanning mat. 
This is a black uh, band down here. It is non-adhesive. It has a flap on it and that prevents cat fur, dog fur, thread, all of that. Okay. All right. Yay, yay, yay. Elaine, don't we get when this, when this happens, finally cut fabric on her DX and it worked out great. Y'all, when that blade goes around and cuts it perfect, you start jumping around like a schoolgirl. Yay! <laughs> I'm so funny when I do it. I'm like, I am a woman. Hear me roll. <laughs> I get all excited. I know. It's early. I'm punchy. Sorry. Sorry. All right. So, P27. I need two of these. And the beauty of this system is that you don't have to scan it twice. You just scan it into your... Uh, brother, can you know, into the machine, upload it to Brother Canvas and duplicate, flip it around, whatever you want. So I'm going to put it right on the mat. I'm not going to trace it on paper or anything. I have streamlined the process. Now, if it doesn't work, if you can't get a good scan, then trace around it on a piece of uh, printer paper with a Crayola marker. That works perfect. I don't recommend a Sharpie because if you accidentally jump up onto the piece when you're tracing around it, you know, because you're kind of pushing on the edge a little bit to keep the shape size. That what am I? I've got something wrong on my camera chip. It's blinking at me. I think it's okay though. My Sony camera's going, hey, something's wrong with the chip. But we're streaming and it's clean HDMI, so I'm a happy girl. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on. Okay. Good morning. How are you? Looks like they're well. We had a storm come through when we left. We left for Houston and then a storm came through. So I was really grateful that I had unplugged all of my machines. So uh, I, I'm glad you can see me. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Bernadette. Yeah. Everybody pop a thumbs up or hit the up arrow on your TV remote. I know I've got lots of kitties and dogs to say hi and good morning to. <laughs> you guys send me pictures of your critters. I love it. I left my coffee on the other side of the sewing room. All right. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There we go. No, oh, it's early. How I roll. I think we'll be fine. This chip had a whole lot of stuff on it, and I just deleted it on the camera. And so it's probably got an issue, but it's okay. It's working. So, um, okay to retrieve and resume previous memory. No, I'm going to hit cancel. All right. So I'm going to load it. Y'all, when you first turn on your scan and cut, you get two big buttons right here. I'm going to see if I can zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. All right. It says uh, pattern and scan. Pattern are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. So I want to create my own pattern. And then we have scan. I want to take a picture of what's on the mat. So I'm just going to hit scan. Now, here's where a lot of people get tripped up. Okay. It says direct cut, scan to cut data, and scan to USB. Okay. Direct cut is if you have like uh, a pretty fabric and you want to fussy cut it, you can direct cut that. But to remember which one, I'm going to give you an easy way to remember which one. Okay. I'm a nerd. And I love Star Trek. Next generation. Remember about data, the Android on Star Trek. Okay, that's the one. <laughs> that's the button. My husband's locked himself out of the house with that fancy digital door lock we have. You got a lot of good mornings. You're out there in your short pants in the 40s? Well, yeah, I didn't, didn't want to put clothes up. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Does the camera need to be plugged in? It is plugged in, sweetheart. Yep, I'm good. All right, so scan to cut data. So data is my favorite Android on Star Trek. So that's the button you want for this process, okay? Just think about that. All right, and I'm just going to tell it start. And it's going to take a picture of what's on the mat. I'll go wide so you can see that thing going in there. Yeah. It is, this is the Scan and Cut SDX325. The only model number higher than this one is the 330D, 
And the only difference between this one and the 330D is that the 330D has Disney designs in it. I don't need Disney designs. Uh, oh, there it is. It looks good. Okay. So this has the same dots per inch scanning capability, same everything, same designs in it. They're identical with the exception of the Disney designs. So I'm going to get you in here. See the little, okay. Now you've got three buttons right here. Okay. We have outside only. We've got inside, outside, and we have regions. So in this case, we want outside only because I only care about what's the shape itself, the outside of the shape. If I was doing lettering, I would need inside, outside so that you can capture the inside of the O and the B and the P's and whatever's right. So I'm just going to tell it outside only. Let's see what we get. Oh, that's a nice, clean line. See that? I'll tell you, the Scan and Cut does not like dashed lines. So if you're ever doing a paper pattern and it, you know, it has the little dashed parts that tuck up underneath uh, the piece that it's supposed to be under, you need to fill those in with a, you, I would trace around that uh, on a piece of printer paper. Thank you, Ms. Faber. I appreciate it. I worked with a lady named Adri Faber. She was awesome. She gave me some coffee, you guys. So we've got the shape. So I didn't have to trace it on paper, okay? That's what I want. It, it, it's just asking me, is this what you want? I'm going to tell it okay. So now it's processing it. And it says, where do you want to save it? It doesn't really say that, but that's what those icons mean. I can save it to the machine. I can save it up to Canvas, or I can save it to the USB. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to do it at the machine today. Oh, I don't feel like fiddling with canvas right now. So I'm going to tell it machine and saving. So this is what you do if your internet's out. All right. Well, Candace, it's your day off and you just woke up. Well, thank you for joining us. Grab a cup and let's visit. Okay. All right. So it's saved to number 28. I'm going to tell it. Okay. So remember, I'm going to go back to home. Okay to delete all patterns. Now, here's, this gets confusing too. Is it okay to delete all patterns? Well, we saved the scan to the machine. So that's saved. We don't have to worry about it. So don't be nervous about deleting this. I'm going to tell it okay. Because we were in scan mode, remember? That was the scan. Now I want to manipulate the pattern that I scanned. So we're done with this part of it. Now I'm going to get into pattern. Well, remember... I told you this button is patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. So if you touch this, this is where you get shapes and fonts and borders and frames and all kinds of designs. Don't want that. I want retrieve data. So that's the button. Scan to cut data, retrieve data. Because Becky's a nerd and she likes Star Trek. So I'm going to hit retrieve data. Where do you want to get it from? I can get it from inside the machine from Canvas, from a USB, or I might be cabled to the computer. I want to get it from the machine. It says retrieving. Now, I wish brother engineers, hint, hint, would make it so that the last scan I scanned would come up first, not the first scan I scanned. I'll tell you what I need to do. I need to hit eject and get, rid get my scanning mat out of my machine. Okay. So... I need to turn my iron on too. Hold on. Where am, I, where am I at? Okay. So I'm just going to touch this double arrow button right here. You can jump forward a page just by hitting the single arrow, or you can go all the way to the end by hitting the double arrow. There it is right there. Number 28. All right. All this is asking on this page is, is this the one you want? If you made a mistake, you can go back or you can delete it. All right. So it's just asking, is this the one you want? I'm going to tell it. Okay. Now we're ready to manipulate the data that's on the screen, the shape that's on the screen. I need two of these and they're mirrored. So well, one of them is mirrored. So I'm just going to touch this and it gets a red line box around it just to identify that particular shape. And I'm going to hit edit. And I don't want to fiddle with the size because 
um, it's in scale already with the rest of the pieces that I have cut. So I'm going to touch object edit. And this is the button I'm after right here. You can change the size. I don't want to do that. You can make multiples. You can rotate, whatever. I want to make multiples. And I want a total of two. And I'm going to tell it okay. All right. I'm going to take this other one. Now see how we've got two and one of them is highlighted with the red box. So that's how you know which one you're going to fiddle with. Okay. So right here. This is my mirror button. It has a white arrow and a blue arrow and they're facing one another with a line. That's my, that's my mirror. So I'm going to flip this there. I've mirrored it. It just did a bloop bloop. That's perfect. I'm going to tell it. Okay. And I need to get my fabric ready. Cause I've been sitting here yakking with y'all instead of doing what I was supposed to do. I've got a piece of heat and bond here somewhere. Let me zoom out. You guys enjoying this? You'll love this process. You'll absolutely love it. Thank you. Reminder to give Becky a thumbs up. <laughs> I put some heat and bond in here a minute ago. There it is. Y'all, I buy heat and bond by the light, by the light, by the bolt. <laughs> and I get it usually at Joann's when they have their 50% off. Okay. So I've got my heat and bond here. This is the adhesive side and this is paper side. If you don't have a scan and cut, you would do this the old fashioned way, right? Okay, which is paper side up and trace around the shape like on a light box or something like that. Okay, I'm just gonna do it on this corner. I've got my little Cricket mat, cricket mat, cricket iron. My neighbor's driving away across the street, going to work. He's late. Good thing he doesn't work for me. I'd fire him. <laughs> Becky, you're a brute. Yeah. This is just a little cricket mini press, you guys. I love this thing. It's so good. It's going to go with me to Houston. They said they give me an iron, but sometimes those irons are hard to work with in the hoop. So you got to let it sit there five to 10 seconds or so. What are you guys doing? You bought SF 101 at Joann's the other day and paid over hundred dollars and it was half off. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. And it's a um, high demand. You can use it for everything. So if you're brand new to embroidery and you wonder when to use SF-101, you use it on the, whoops, you use it on the back of your background fabrics. Fell in my scrap bin. Stay. Use it on the back of your background fabrics. Uh, not your applique fabrics. When you're, what the heck? Y'all, look what I just did. I just ironed my heat and bond to my heat press. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's early and it's Monday. Y'all, that was a scream. Now I've, That's funny. I'll have to get that off there. <laughs> funny is that oh my word y'all I'm make sure I've got some here we go <laughs> you guys have to laugh at yourself when you do that <laughs> oh. I was pulling up the fabric going it doesn't feel like it's very sticky Oh, it happens to everybody. That's hilarious. My scissors are MIA. I've got some right up here. That's a scream. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all,
Y'all, I make mistakes like it's my job. That's too funny. No one is above it. It happens to everybody. Okay, this should work. There, that's right. <laughs> Okay. The way you get that off, by the way, is uh, heat it up again with a piece of Teflon or a piece of this paper that doesn't have any adhesive on it anymore. Get it nice and hot and then take one of those uh, rubber scrubbers with the little fingers for the, you can use it in your kitchen or whatever, and it will, uh, you can scrub on that and that'll bead up and then it'll come off. It'll be fine. Might leave a little mark, but it'll be all right. Okay. It's the cold brain freeze. <laughs> hey, that happens. At least it's happening here and not on the main stage at Houston, right? Y'all, I've had some snags in Houston, too. It's okay. You guys are very gracious and forgiving and go, well, that happens to everybody. Okay. My scrap. Okay. And Kathy says the worst to herself would be, you need to go back to bed. <laughs> I've got such a busy day ahead. I'm going to be uh, getting my pattern and everything digitized and ready to go for the Houston show. Okay. Leave it to me last minute to say, I, I think I'm, now I know what I want to do. Okay. All right, so the easiest way to get this paper off is to act like you're gonna tear the fabric a little bit. And when you tear the fabric, you get a little peel. You don't really tear the fabric. You actually make a break in the paper and you get a little peel. Oh God, see how glassy that is? That's right, that's how that's supposed to look, okay? <laughs> oh, that's hilarious, all right. I'm going to put this on my, now I'm using my low tack mat. Y'all don't, don't put adhesive or paper or anything on the high tack or the fabric mat. You don't need it. I mean the standard tack, the purple one. I don't have enough space. So I'm just going to put this on here anywhere. Good Lord willing and the creek don't rise, the fabric won't come up. Okay. So I want you to know, oh, here we go. Put this in like this. So I want you to notice, I did not look at the screen and count the boxes and say, okay, I need to put the fabric right exactly here so it'll fit. I don't care about that. Okay, I really don't because I'm going to, this is where the scan and cut makes its money. I'm going to scan the mat and take a picture of the mat to see where the fabric is and then move the pieces exactly where I want them to be. So I'm going to hit load. Where's my coffee? That's probably part of the problem. <laughs> and uh, I don't need to do anything else with this. I'm just going to hit okay. And let me zoom you in. I can hear Harley making all kind of noise. My other dog. She's, she's very vocal. You. Sorry, guys. Right there. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Oh, aren't you sweet, Mrs. P? Thank you. You're, you're a doll for the super sticker. I truly appreciate that. All right, so here's where the magic happens, guys. We've got this blue box right here with a bar across it, okay? And that's the scanning. That's, that's going to tell the scan and cut to take a picture of the mat. So I'm just going to hit the box, and it says press start to scan. I'm going to do that. So in it goes. Okay, it's taking a picture of the map. <laughs> Mrs. P says <laughs> that 
error deserved a pay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll probably have to buy a new cut and press, right? <laughs> I think I can salvage it. All right, let's get in here and take a look at what we got. Oh, I want to give you all another secret. I'm going to back right out here. Here's another super tip. Super, super good tip. If you're working with white fabric on your mat, when you scan it in, it's darn near impossible to see. Take a uh, fabric marker of some sort. It, it could even be a Sharpie. Thank you so much, Heather. You're a sweetheart. I appreciate that. <laughs> you can take, I'll, I usually use my friction markers and I will draw little lines in the corners of the fabric as registration marks to tell me where the edges of the fabric are on the white. So as long as you keep your shapes within those registration marks that you drew on your fabric, which you're going to cut that off anyway, okay? So just make yourself some registration marks in your corners. I make little L's, little letter L, capital L's. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to have to go back and delete that out of the video. What a hot mess. This is a Monday for sure, Frida. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, guys. My goodness. Okay. Where were we? So I can see here on the screen... Let me get right in here real close where you guys can see. All right. Sorry about that. That's my dog. She's so happy to be alive at the age of 16. So let me have, I'm just going to drag this right onto the mat, both of them. And I think that they're going to be fine. Now, what's really neat about this process too, is you can actually save fabric because if you were doing this, the regular way that Lori Holt does, she has you use a piece of fabric the same size for each one. So I've used about a third less fabric, okay? I think that that's gonna cut out fine. I'm gonna tell it okay. And please select and then cut. Uh-huh. And we're gonna start. What it does, it's coming over and it's taken a depth registration of the mat and now a depth registration of the fabric before it begins to cut. Don't cut fabrics of different depths, you know, thicknesses at one time. Oh, at least that worked, you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. Doesn't that make you happy? It makes me happy very much. Okay. When you scrape off these pieces, be careful not to tug them. We'll just like getting pizza off of a pizza pan. Okay. Just like that. That's great. I'm going to tell it okay. And home. Okay to delete. Okay and eject and we are done with scan and cut except 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 um hold on one second here you guys <clears throat> i need oh Goodness sakes, Monday, Monday, until about two minutes ago, before we started, I was going to be over at my other machine. I hope this USB works. I'm going to put a USB in here. Okay. I'm going to go back to retrieve data. Uh, the machine. The last one. I didn't save that duplicate, edit, object, add, edit, two of them, drag it over, mirror that one, tell it okay, tell it okay, save to the USB. 
Okay, there we go. See how fast that is? Once you get savvy with what button is what, you'll be running around on this thing like a microwave oven. It's it's so quick. Oh, thank you, Marsha. <laughs> Marsha's so sweet. Martha, Mar Marsha uh, funds my habits here. Okay, so I've got those pieces on a USB. I'm going to put that into um, my laptop here. And we want to create the embroidery design. Can I do that? I don't know if I can do that. I can't. Hold on a second here. I've got USB ports. Hmm. Okay. Put this right here. Okay. So I'm going to open in brilliance. I have my little dog from last week right here. Okay. Let me go back here to you guys. I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see how I do this. Yeah, Pam. It's a Monday for sure, my friend. <laughs> so let me turn this back on. That thing times out after 13 minutes. Okay, we go to window and in brilliance and share. All right. So I'm going to close this one. So that's the old, that's the dog right there. Okay, but I want to show you how I got there. So this guy. Okay. See here on the side, let me make sure you can see what I see. Yes. See here on the side, it says scottydog.fcm. So that is a graphic. That's, that's not an embroidery design. It looks like an embroidery design because it has the final stitch on it, but I still need to add his little bow ties that we just scanned in and cut. So I'm going to add something to this now in this graphic. And I'm going to open Stitch Artist. So in Brilliance is the platform. And then it has all different kinds of modules. All right. Your basic is in Brilliance Essentials. This is a digitizing module called Stitch Artist 2. So I'm going to click on the Stitch Artist module. And now it has the button right here that says Vector. And that's what that FCM file is. I'm going to click on it. Where do I want to get it? It's not in my downloads. Let me hit the download button and go to my USB drive. There it is right there. I'm going to click that and open. All right. Now, I don't want... So when I click on this plus sign over here... Oh, I didn't do that right. Let me highlight this. Hold the control key down and hit this one. I'm going to hit delete. How come it didn't go away? Do what I tell you. I'm going to hit delete and hit this one and hit delete. So when you're doing this, if you don't want the blanket stitches to show on the pieces that are underneath something that is being covered, we don't want the bulk and we don't want the look. You have to tell the software that it's another design. Um, so I'm going to come up here to create design, begin new design. And see, now I have design three. So design one was the body of the dog. Design two was the body of the bandana, the little neck part. And then the third design, I'm going to hit the vector button. And I'm going to bring in my bandana ties. And I'm going to click open. All right. I don't know which one is which. I'm just going to fiddle with this, okay? I'm going to choose one of these. Let me open this up with the plus sign in the objects panel. I'm going to pick the last one and I'm going to hit delete. Which one do I want on the bottom? Actually, that one I want on the bottom, I think. So I'm going to grab it by the green box. My, my cursor turns into a little hand and I'm going to put it right here. 
That looks good. Maybe rotate it just a little bit. See, that looks really good. Now, this other one is going to sit on top of it right here. So I, if I just pop this on top of it, it won't remove the, the blanket stitches underneath. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to click on this other one and I'm going to hit delete. Remember, I have to tell the software it's a new design. So I'm going to do this again. I'm going to go to create, design, begin new design. I'm going to hit vector again and bring in my little pieces and tell it open. Okay. So down here now, this one right here, I don't want. That's the one that I've already used. I'm going to hit delete on that one. And now this one, I'm going to grab it and move it. And I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that it's cute there. Okay. Let's uh, zoom in a little here and see how it goes. That looks pretty good. I think you guys like that. I think that's fine. Let me rotate it a little bit this way. Whoop. Okay. I like that. All right. Uh, let me zoom back out. So I'm going to uh, control A to select all, and I'm going to touch this applique button right up here in the top menu there. Now everything is converted to applique. All right. It looks like we have got bunches of stitches here and here, and it looks like you can see them all, but that's because it's a graphic. When we convert it to an embroidery design, those will go away. But I want to make these just a little bit smaller stitches. So I'm because they're it's a little tiny piece. So I'm going to touch the button for applique. And when I do that, you guys, this right here where it says border, this is where you can change it to blanket stitch, satin, a zigzag, or none. Okay. See, I just it tapped zigzag. So let me do this. I want it to be the E stitch. And right now it's at 3.5. I want to change it to 2.5 and hit enter. And that looks a lot better. It's, it looks like a cleaner uh, stitch. So let me do it to the other one as well. That's on a four. Let me change that to 2.5. There. That looks nice. See, so it's not so bunched up with stitches up here in the top and whatnot. I like that. So, um, okay. So now I'm just going to tell it right here. I'm going to tell it file, save as stitch and working. Stitch is the embroidery design. Working is what we're playing with right here. I'm going to call this Scotty with the bandana dash two, because that's the second one. And I'm going to tell it save. All right. Now, a really very cool feature. If you have any wireless brother or baby lock machine that accepts designs wirelessly. Not they all don't do that, but if you have a machine that accepts accepts designs wirelessly, I'm going to come up here and this is in brilliance, okay? I'm going to click utility. It says send to Solaris XP1. This is the XP3. It works with my 10 needle, it works with my NQ3700D travel machine. So it works on any machine that accepts designs wirelessly because it's all the same wireless technology in those machines. So I'm going to hit that and it is titled Scotty Bandana 2. Um, hold on a minute. No, not yet. Look, we're still in the FCM file. I know I sent that. I don't want that. I'm going to open new now I want to open the embroidery design. So you can see when you go to open, there's my working design and there's the embroidery design. And I'm going to click open. Now I want you to look. Let me scroll in here. I want you to see this is so cool. Now you can see where the designs that are overlapped are not going to be stitching those blanket stitches. So you cannot do that in BES or simply applique. 
you can do that in this software because it's a more advanced software. Now this I want to send utility sent to Solaris XP one. I'm going to call it uh, Scotty dog. I'm going to call it Scotty dash P E S. So I don't get it confused with the last one and tell it. Okay. And it says file sent to the machine. Okay. So that's how you do that. That's how simple that is. Okay. Scotty says her CM did not grab the mat at the same time, probably due to one rubber piece missing on the rod. That's entirely possible. On the CM, the little sensor is up on the left-hand corner. On the DX models, the sensor is over on the right-hand corner. So when you have it pushed in there on the CM model, just make sure to give it a straight little tiny push, okay, on that upper left corner and see if that works. All right, let's stitch out our dog. What do you say? I've got the luminaire here ready to go. Y'all, I just have uh, one color thread on top. Just makes life easier. Okay. So I have my little dog. Here's all my applique pieces. I'm going to put them up here in the tray on the top. There's little bandana pieces. Okay. Now what I did, let me move my ironing iron so that it knows it's still wanted and needed and doesn't shut itself off. I drew a crosshair in the hoop. Okay. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit. See the crosshair in the blue? Okay. Okay. So I'm just going to take my fabric and kind of just fold it in half, right sides together, and then fold it into quarters. Just to kind of give me an idea of where this is going to be. And then I'm going to put it on here and line it up. And then fold it over, keeping it straight on the blue line and then fold it up. I'm going to float this. I'm going to use a little uh, K Sulky's KK2000. This is great. I prefer this to 505. It doesn't leave any residue. It doesn't have any fumes. I'm just going to lay that on there. It, the overspray is minimal. Okay. I don't have the workspace here that I need you guys. <clears throat> Spray it on the stabilizer, not on the fabric. I'm using a uh, bro thread, no show mesh. I think I'm going to switch to Bozel. I uh, tried some Bozel at market and I really liked it. I really liked it. And it's not crazy expensive. So I'm taking pins and I'm just securing the outer corners just to make sure nobody decides to jump around and get froggy and shift or anything like that. You never want to put pins anywhere near your embroidery field. You'll jack up your machine big time. All right. I've got a dime pre-wound 70 weight bobbin. I love those. All right. And I need to thread my needle. Okay. I think we're ready to go. That's kind of cool, isn't it? So let me show you what happens with this process that we did. Okay. Yes, Bozel has no show mesh, Kim. They sure do. And I am uh, working with them to get some in my hands so I can test it and play with it. Yes, Bozel stabilizer, like that stuff that goes into bags. They make a, matter of fact, well, um, Lisa Shaw turned me on to that from uh, the, the Embrilliance Educator. 
She said, that's all she uses. And I'm like, really? Hmm. Okay. So let's, we're here at the Luminaire. Let's get in here and take a look. Let's see if our dog, if we can find the dog. You and your little dog. All right. Let me move the computer. I'm using heat and bond light on the back of the fabric. I'm going to move this so you guys can see. There we go. That looks good. So I'm going to go to embroidery. And it wants to know where do you want to get the design you want to play with from. So I want to get it from the pocket for memory. And where? Okay, you can get it from the machine or from a USB. Uh, it might be on a chip. I sent it wirelessly. So let's see if we can find it. That's the Scotty without the little tabs. Where's my Scotty PES? These are alphabetical. Scotty PES. There he is. Looking good. I'm going to hit set. Uh, I want to rotate him for my brain. I think I'm going to hit edit and rotate and 90. There. That's cute. That looks good. I'm going to tell it okay. And I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to hit embroidery. Uh, okay. And I want to show you on the Luminaire or on any embroidery machine, this one has a, it gives you a little preview of what you're going to stitch. So this is the placement line for the dog body. Okay. That's what we're going to do. Why not? Okay. It looks good. Y'all, I'm going to go grab my coffee while that stitches. I'll be right back. It's amazing. If you've ever made a Lori Holt quilt with simple shapes, this will make you a believer, you guys. Okay. I need to iron the dog on. So I'm going to remove the hoop. piece here and you want to be sure to get him on just right you don't want to be over the line now if you're if you're over the line a tiny bit you can always micro trim but you don't want to be short let me get him on there and then sometimes it helps to just do like one leg and then the next piece just to massage that fabric around Make sure it is exactly where you want it. I'm telling y'all, once you do this this way, you won't go back to doing that other method where you have to trace all the pieces and then um, you know, sew around with the interfacing. I talked to the reps at Riley Blake in the booth at market. And I told them, this is what I'm doing. And I always tell you guys, once you digitize these shapes, we are um, stitchers of conscience and we do not share these, right? It's stealing if you share them. That is, this is the intellectual property of Lori Holt and Riley Blake. All right. That looks really good. Okay. So now what it's going to do is the final blanket stitch or e-stitch all the way around the dog. And let me show you what's going on here. All right. Look in the preview. 
See how it's going to skip those spots that have pieces that are going to be on top of it. And that's exactly what we want. That's awesome. Okay. It's breakfast time for the dogs. So this is ready to go. I'm just going to tell it to stitch it down. Yep. Yeah, good for you, Sharon. She said she stitched the Christmas Village from Sweet Pea this weekend on the Brother SE 1900. That's awesome. Baby steps. Do the scan and cut next. So I will tell you the um, the SVG files from Sweet Pea. There's a disclaimer on their web page that says these may not these may not fit. So you're going to want to create your own SVG files. Pop them into in Brilliance. You, essentials will do it. And create your own SVG files from the placement line. Okay. Um, I've got a video. I've got a couple of videos on my channel to show you how to do that. Okay. Bye, Julianne. Have a good time feeding the animals. Yeah, that... That preview is awesome, Margie. It it lets you know exactly what's coming, and you can you can tell. And if it's out of order, then you can use the needle plus minus to jump around. If you made a mistake, you can use the needle plus minus to jump around and figure out, um, you know, what's next. That because that happens. Well, it happens to me. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Elma. Welcome. Glad you joined us. Okay. Let's see. Couldn't I run the base stitch around the block instead of spraying? Um, sure. I generally don't, but you could. So if you run the basting stitch around the block, in this case, um, I've got to take it out because I've only got so much space, right, around it. It's just another step, and spraying it's a little bit easier. I'm liking it. Okay. Placement line for the bandana. How fast this is. Oh, it's so, so fast. <laughs> I have a little. This is from uh, Embroidery Garden, Reen Wilcoxon. It's just a little pad, very handy. And you've got little pieces like this. You just want to pop this up under here. And so that you don't sew your tail, your tails or your pad to your thing. Throw your tails up on your mat, on your hoop. Because, but I, I truly believe you're not a real embroiderer until you have gone through the rite of passage of sewing your press mat to the back of your hoop. <laughs> rite of passage, you guys. It's how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Cannot tell you the number of times I've done that. And here's the blanket stitch or the E stitch around that. <laughs> Let's see. Good morning, Deborah. Did I skip the tack down? Okay, so that's a really good question. Yeah, um, in this process, because the pieces are already cut, there is no tack down. And when you design this in, in Brilliance, if you want a tack down stitch, you can copy and paste the placement stitch 
and then reorder it in the stitch order so that it's in the right spot. But it by default, it does not give you a tack down stitch because your pieces, well, my pieces are already cut. Okay. And ideally, uh, you'd want to create those cut files. Oh, I don't know which one's which. I'm going to have to look. This one uh, goes, let's see. It's under here. Where's my little tails? Let's see here. I think this is it. Is that right? Yes, that is right. Okay. Okay. So in Lori Holt's method of doing this, you lay some non-fusible interfacing uh, face down with the fabric side pretty side up and you stitch, you draw a line all around the outside of the shape on the interfacing and then you stitch 100% and fully enclose the shape. Then you cut a quarter of an inch around all the way around the outside. Like that's how you create the seam allowance. Then you pull it apart, you make a snip, you get a turning tool and you turn the whole piece. Okay, so that's where that seam allowance comes in. You don't have that here because you cut the shape of the fabric exactly to the size of the shape itself. Y'all, this is a four minute embroidery stitch. My Frito's coming in the room. Uh-oh. Did I put this on backwards? No, I did it right. Oh, I did do it. I must have done it backwards, y'all. Hi, Frito. Good morning. Good morning, hello, baby girl. Yeah, I must have done this backwards because it doesn't want to fit. Or maybe it does want to fit, and I don't. I must have done it backwards. Well... I think I sewed the wrong one on. I can fix that. Not a big deal. Just got to get this on here right is what I got to do. Yeah. Just have to get it placed properly. probably sewed them wrong. It's fine. This is a sample anyway, just to show you guys it works. <laughs> then Lori uh, glue dots them and puts them exactly where she wants them on a placement uh, on the background fabric. And then she sews them all down, needle turn or whatever you want. Okay. There we go. Now I got a little bit of a uh, little bit of um, micro trimming I need to do, but other than that, it turned out good. Look how precise that stitching is. It turned out great. My little dog. Yep, love it. Absolutely love it. Woo. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> you are a sweetheart, Kathy Moriarty. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm missing y'all's comments. Yeah, the queen size quilts do take forever. I know. 
Um, Heather says sold. <laughs> yeah. He needs an eye. I know, Tiny. He does. I know. I could give him one. And the way you can do that, I guess I could uh, scan scan him in on the Luminaire and create the eye by creating a shape in Design Center and, and putting it on there for him. So you guys, uh, yeah, talk, talking, talking with embroidery is fun. Uh, it's part of the teaching process. Plus it's really, uh, really, I mean, it's, it's simple to do. And when you guys do this, okay, I get a lot of people who say, okay, I've got this great big design and I want to get this done. And while I can appreciate the enthusiasm, y'all start small. Okay. Start with a square or a circle and then layer a couple of shapes on top of each other. Don't, don't be over enthusiastic and start with an Amy Bradley design that is going to, um, that can become frustrating when you start layering designs. Okay. And then super advanced when you start multiple hoopings. Okay. So if you're doing a great big, what are you doing, Frito? Come here. Come here, baby. She wants to say hi. Come here, baby. There's my girl. There's my Frito time. Yes. Good morning, baby girl. <laughs> Poor thing. They cut her tail so short when she was a pup. So when you're going to be doing designs that are large, like if you're doing the crazy quilt lady or quilt diva by Amy Bradley or that giant Christmas tree with all the sewing stuff in it, anything that's going to be super involved and multiples and you have to do multiple hoopings, that's really, really advanced. So please don't do that right out the gate, okay? Just start with a shape that's already in the scan and cut. Just go to the shapes and use that and then use it to cut out your fabric to make the design. Save it to a USB, take it to your embroidery machine um, or take it into the software, convert it to applique and take it to the embroidery machine. So, uh, bye Barbara, have a good class. So, you guys, um, baby steps. Okay. Absolutely. Start with baby steps and the better you get, you'll feel more comfortable. You'll feel more confident. And then you can start layering your designs and, um, you're gonna, uh, it's going to change your world and it's absolutely going to change the way you look at applique quilt patterns in the future. And from now on. So, all right, you guys, this has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you had a great day. I hope you have a great day. Uh, you guys go sew something, okay? <laughs> Bye.